Hello friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 3, Ruined World. Turns out my emulator was fine, I just had the sound settings going through the wrong speakers last time. Hehe. <laughs> I might need to get across the river some other way then, huh? Also, what an odd square stone formation. Huh. Seriously, where are there goblins around here? Official Empire Scenic Overlook. Eagle Rock, 20 miles west. We got a note about an Eagle Rock ages ago. The stone spire just to the west looks just like an eagle. This natural formation would be much more impressive if you weren't so surrounded by horror and death. Hmm... Who's got that last piece of paper? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Might have left it back at one of my bases of operations. Also, Peridot, why don't you have any pants? <laughs> Anyway, Eagle Rock. I remember some instructions to do with an Eagle Rock. Not very well. If I go north, I don't hit anything. If I go west from it, I just hit river. And if I go east from Eagle Rock, we hit the square patch of stones. Well, there's apparently nothing in the middle here. So perhaps it is more of a signal to change direction? Aha! As you wend your way through the rubble-strewn hills, you notice that one of the piles of rocks is actually a cairn. Digging a bit, you find a lump of strange, dull metal. Ooh. I've got another set of metal lumps. And I think there's a blacksmith far to the south of here that can do something cool with them. And is there anything in this mountain range that I should know about? Eh, not finding much so far. Another couple of rows of rocks. Oh, hello. And what might you be? There is something glowing at the head of the valley. You hike up and find a glowing, insubstantial figure. You think it's a humanoid shape but it's too faint and unstable for you to be sure. It motions for you to come closer. Do you? It says, I hoped you would come to me. It is easy to appear here, near where my body is. The key is in Footracer, and the key to Footracer is in Blackcrag. Blackcrag has a side entrance. Search closely. You will have allies against us, so that we may be stopped. The form wavers. Oh no. I must fly, before I am found. It disappears. Very interesting. This land is of the guild. Those beyond will be at our mercy. Okay, and which guild might that be? Same thing. Awfully large valley, isn't it? You come across an encampment of heavily armed men and women. When you get close, you see that several have a strange eye insignia on their armor. One of them rises and shouts to you, You are not allowed to be here. Depart or die. Several of them start preparing spells. Hmm. Maybe I'll come back to that.
Okay, well, the land may belong to the guild, but it doesn't seem like they're using it for a whole lot. Now, question, is this the famous Thieves Guild, or is it another guild? Because if it's the Thieves Guild, I may not want to tick them off too much. Champions, Mages, Wizard. Okay, then. You search the bodies. You find gold and a variety of useful items. However, you find no sign of who they are or where they came from. At the top of the valley, you find a small patch of that rarest of alchemical ingredients, Mandrake. I'm pretty okay with this result for now. And Connie, you are carrying way too many alchemical ingredients. Give all of that to Pearl. Oh, I've got a couple of mystery items here. I should do some identifying. Steel great sword, steel shield. And the stuff I picked up from Dragoth was two scrolls of flame. And actually, I have no idea which to potions. <laughs> but I think a medium energy and strong healing match the graphics of the potions that I've picked up. And at least one of those is quite useful. Yeah, Connie could use some healing, I guess. Connie also has the Ring of Regeneration. Not that she really needs it. Oh, Steven's had another Ring of Regeneration this entire time. Oh boy, I'm at that point of the game where I can't remember all of the goodies that I have. Another intriguing valley over here. Very high up in the mountains. At the end of the valley, you find a large temple. It's a massive marble structure, surrounded by guards. The front gate has the design of a large coin on it. Approach. An effusively friendly priest comes out to greet you. 
Welcome, friends, he says. I am Volovsky. Welcome to the Temple of the Divine Lucre. He brings you inside. Must be the home temple. This is the largest sanctum of our faith, where our best come for elite holy training. And, as the Church of the Divine Lucre believes substantive self-improvement is our greatest purpose, you can guess what is required to be taught. He grins. For only five thousand gold, you may be elevated into the highest circle of our church, and be taught our secrets. He has you brought tea. Are you interested? Sure. You are taken into the inner sanctum, and taught the learning and rituals of the church in a clipped, cost-efficient way. You are told to strive for self-improvement in all things, and that the obtaining of money is the surest path to that end. The temple's prayer books are very good. You learn the spells Divine Thud, yes, and Mass Charm. Already had that one. In addition, your mage lore skill improves. Very cool. Eventually, you leave. Your head's filled with a variety of bizarre ideas. Excellent. Disturbing event. Suddenly, without warning, you feel a vicious mental jolt. As your head clears, you feel something horrible has happened, but you haven't the slightest idea what. Oh, so this is when that event is supposed to kick in, I see. Anyway, we can keep exploring up here. And maybe I will do for just a bit longer. After all, that horrible event message was pretty vague, wasn't it? Okay, once again, need to get over a river. Although... I do like to keep my horses with me when I can. Aha! Here's that patch of unexplored forest that I was thinking of last episode. It's uh, to the north of Lake Tomor, not to the northwest. And there's not a whole lot in it, except for this. The bit of land encircled by the river to the east was an Empire Army outpost. The wall to the west and the river to the east made it a perfect place to keep soldiers safe and fed when the army wasn't out marching. The outpost has been destroyed. Some creatures actually clawed their way through the thick stone walls, and the settlement was devastated. This happened some time ago. You only find broken weapons and crumbled buildings, all starting to be overgrown. Welp. I see something in this thicket of trees, but I need to leave my horses to get it. The horrible feeling you felt earlier returns, stronger than ever. You hear a voice in your mind, a female voice that sounds strongly familiar. It says simply, We are dying! Help us! Oh god, help us! Then, mercifully, the feeling fades. Maybe I should actually, you know, do something about that. In a small glade, you find the remains of a band of Ursagi, who were torn to shreds by some sort of powerful, clawed creature. Oddly, whoever killed them neither ate them, nor took their treasure. You find a bunch of coins and a spear. Okay, then. Make sure I land from the orb usage. Sounds like those Arsagi might have been killed by some blade golems if they didn't eat them. The alien beasts, I expect, would eat any other creature they can. But this uh, seems like a good opportunity to use... A thing that I can't do because I'm too far from Fort Emergence. Crud. Oh, 
All right, then, southward. Preferably near some landmark that I can use to remember where I've parked the horses. There we go. So... Let's check in with Anaximander. He usually seems to know what's going on. You enter Anaximander's office and immediately see from his face that something is horribly wrong. Demons have taken the Tower of Magi. They've sealed it off from exile and are summoning more of their kind. If something is not done, they will soon have the force to decimate exile and slay everyone there. The only way into the tower, we think, is the portal in the portal fortress, and the only group we can send to do anything is yours. Oh, snap. He's clearly terrified. Come in and speak to me, so I can tell you where to go. If you don't get down there soon, our land and all in it are doomed. Whoa. An Aximander greets you, a terrified expression on his face. Welcome. I trust you have heard. The Tower of Magi has fallen to demons. It is desperately important that someone go there and stop them. Somehow, the Tower of Magi was seized by mighty demons. We've lost control of the portal. We need you to analyze the situation. You should go to the portal keep immediately. Yeah, I would have thought that going to the portal keep was the logical next step in investigating anything at the Tower of Magi. Alright then, let us skedaddle. Although, just for grins and giggles, I want to see what happens if I ignore what's happening at the Tower of Magi. You hear again a cacophony of voices, distant and filled with horror. Then one drowns out all the others. A cruel, deep, inhuman voice. We have the tower, and soon we will have you all. So come defy us. Nothing would make us happier. Yeah, the wiser course of action could be to run. And maybe just... Ah, I can only do long waits in towns. I guess if I'm outside, I have to rest. A ghostly image appears in front of you. It's an Aximander. He says, Return to Fort Emergence as soon as possible. Drop whatever you're doing. The greatest emergency yet faces us, and we need your help. Again, the screams from far beneath the earth come to you, combined with inhuman howls of hunger and triumph. You cannot help but feel that if something is not done soon, something horrible will happen. Again, the inhuman, evil voice comes to you. I am Greyhoth, and I am coming. Soon I will be here and you will have no home to return to. All exile will suffice to satisfy my hunger. He laughs and fades away. So yeah, the game is really giving me a lot of opportunities to react and go deal with the problem, huh? You have the strongest feeling of horror yet, and deep, overwhelming sense of great evil building. You know that if action is not taken, and very soon, the effects will be truly devastating. From below the earth, you are suddenly bombarded with images, sent to you mentally by the now triumphant Greyhoth. A portal has been opened, 
and hordes of demons are flowing into exile. The portal to the surface has been destroyed. You cannot go help. Nothing can be done. By the time exile can fight off the invasion, there will be very little left. Maybe, someday, the few survivors will return to the surface. It will, however, be hard to take much satisfaction in it. Ooh, and uh, that results in a total party kill. Oh dear. <laughs> that seems a little unfair somehow. So let's not let that happen. We have the tower, and soon we will have you all. So come defy us. Nothing would make us happier. Yeah, yeah, working on it. I'm coming, I'm coming. So is Greyhoth sending us these messages in particular, or is he broadcasting to anyone connected with the Underworld? Well... Anyone con connected with the Caverns of Exile specifically, I guess. He might not be sending messages to the Vanatai. <coughs> Celeste the Mage still stands in front of the portal. However, the portal flickers ominously and has occasional tinges of an angry red shade. She no longer looks unconcerned about its proximity. I am still the portal overseer, a much more difficult job since the tower disaster. We need to get someone down there, and fast, to take the tower back from the evil creatures and stabilize the portal. Otherwise, the portal will be destroyed, along probably with most of Exile. horrible job now. It's taking all my energy to keep what's going on in the Tower of Magi now from destroying the portal. Someone can teleport down there now, but they won't be able to for long. Gods help us if nobody can do anything. Yeah, so it's quite likely that if the Tower and this portal get destroyed, some to all of Upper Exile gets dead too. Boy, sure, it would be nice to have Demon Slayer, but it's really not even been mentioned if it's in this game at all. You again stand before the portal. It is as powerful as always, but wavers and sputters occasionally, as if all that energy was not under control as much as it could be. Enter it? And after a Pretty standard teleport entering the teleporter message. That's unusual. You enter the Tower of Magi through a huge hole that's been blasted into the wall. The formerly bright halls now stink of sulfur and echo with inhuman roars. You also hear a soft human voice. In the meeting room, quickly! Three impressive carved stone chairs dominate this small meeting room. Surprisingly, the demons have pretty much left it alone. Oh, we've got someone human hiding back here. It's Solberg! You meet Solberg, wearing torn and scorched robes that mark him as a member of the triad of the Tower of Magi. He is dirty and has been burned, and is cowering back here out of the way. I am Solberg. Thank heavens help has come! He waves at the cracked and burned walls. It was Linda. She tried again to summon and control the dark powers. And now we may all be doomed. Linda! He seems barely able to contain his anger. Damn her to the pit forever! You cannot imagine the horror that has been wrought here. If you cannot help us contain the dark power, we may all be doomed. He calms down a little. Still, if you could speak to her, she might be able to tell you what she did. She survived the demon's attack. I saw her running to the southeast. 
I hope she survives this ordeal, if only so I can punish her myself. Years ago, we finally banished the demon lord Greyhoth from our caves. Now she has made it possible for him to return. There is a gate to the north, through which even now he is trying to force himself. That is the problem. I don't know how to close the gate. I can sense it from here. It is powerful in a way I am completely unfamiliar with. Explore the tower as best you can. Maybe you'll find a clue for how to deal with it. Linda might know. But before you go, a warning. There is a garden in the center of the tower. It is guarded by the bulk of Greyhoth's forces. Avoid it, or you may well be overwhelmed. After all, I... Don't have all the spells in the game yet, nor have I reached the level cap on... I think any characters yet? Possibly Pearl? It was only through great luck and cost that he was banished before. This time he is prepared. He must be kept away. Wait, actually, that last bit. The gate is at the northwest corner of the tower. Okay. A guttural voice booms through the tower's halls. I sense you here. You have come to me. Hide and scurry if you like, for soon my servants will find you. Also, I'm pretty sure that the... Uh, horrible messages I showed off earlier and the general destruction and dying won't happen as long as I'm in the tower. Pretty sure. Oh no, imps. You know what? I do have some tools I can use here against demons. Granted, I'm not sure using it on imps is really worthwhile. Oh no, I am cursed. I might haste myself just to move through the halls a little faster. Ooh, nice. Oh, full demon. Some blessing as well. Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent. Feels really weird to be fighting endgame demons without Demon Slayer.
Not that I'm needing it all that much. Oh, that's different. Time for fire walk. Well, that won't do. And demons seem to be redecorating the place a little bit. Hmm. As you approach the entrance gate of the Tower of Magi, fiery sheets of lightning spring across the open portcullises, blocking your exit. You leap back just in time to avoid a very quick death. And honestly, moving into exile proper at this point, it seems like it wouldn't be the best idea. Oh dear. Oh dear. The body of the proprietor of this store lies before you. Something nailed him with a very large piece of thrown marble. And this one's even worse. Somebody got totally blasted here. Only a thick reddish goo remains. Ew. You can be hasted if you want to, but I'm putting a strong curse on you. Unfortunately, I su suspect most of the NPCs that were in the Tower of Magi are now dead. Hello. Alright, fine, I will haste again.
melee weapons are much more efficient than fireballs when the enemy is fireproof. That's right, Garnet. My favorite spell is not doing me nearly as much good here. And Garnet says, how dare I pay attention to not the cat. Stone short sword, lockpicks, gold, and food. Sort of random. The horrible voice rings out again, coming from all around you. Still struggling? I have gained enough force to act! Suddenly, a cloud of sparks springs from the walls. It ends abruptly, but not before you are burned. Blarg. There was a ghost in the corner. And it looks like a friendly spirit. You encounter the insubstantial form of a middle-aged man, still wearing translucent robes and a sash of office. He motions you forward. I was Conrock. There was not much time. Hurry! I was useless in life. Don't let me be useless in death, too. He points at the spectral sash of office. This was a sign of my uselessness. I could do nothing as a bureaucrat. When the demons came, I saw my chance. They have a gate, and they're trying to bring more demons through. I tried to close it. The main way to it was well guarded, but I found a back entrance. Oh, that sounds useful. There's a well-hidden secret door far to the northwest. I snuck through it and then through a storeroom, squeezed through a cracked wall, and was near their portal. Then a demon surprised me. It sucked away my energy, picked me up, and gutted me. Oh, how it hurt. He winces at the memory. I failed to reach the gate. Now you must try. Otherwise, you are all doomed. You can't feel it. You're not spirits. But I can. An evil force of incredible power is coming. I wouldn't want to be you if you don't shut that portal soon. So yeah, quite possible actually that we don't have quite as much time as I'd hoped. Hmm. Temple is blocked by lava. Okay, yeah, I might be on a bit more of a timer here than I thought. It might even be worthwhile to move through more of this area in combat mode. I spend all my spell points on Ravage Spirits. is a garden. Okay, move mountains and shatter are not spells that I can cast in combat mode. Firewalk, on the other hand, is. So I shall fear no lava. You make your way into the Tower of Magi's Temple, the only room to remain completely undamaged by the demon's attack. The good energy of the place heats the air around you, 
keeping the demons at bay. As you stare at the holy altar to the south, you cannot help but wonder how long it's going to last before the foul creatures break through its defenses. You reach the Holy Altar, the only place in the Tower of Magi not at the total mercy of the Demon Horde. On top of the altar, you see a small, polished knife with a gold handle and a razor-sharp blade. You recognize this knife. This is one of the few blessed Athanes in existence. They are small knives with mithril blades, magically forged and multiply blessed, having the ability to cut practically anything. Someone has set it here, ready for the taking. You take up the Blessed Athane. As you do, creatures appear all around you. The massive demon leading them croaks, Thank you so much. We couldn't get it from the altar, but we can certainly get it from you. They attack. Great. Now there's a Mung Demon. Which one of you guys is the Mung Demon? Eep. Okay, you're a Mung Demon, not a Hakai. That's pretty good, actually. Ooh, so much damage. No, no, don't miss. I am still blessed, but I can always use more. you to waste my arrows of light. Oh, nuts. darts. I have not actually seen those so far. And I am not still firewalking. Slight problem, that. And Steven desperately needs some energy. I'm not sure if I can cast Dispel Barriers in combat mode. I cannot. Ooh. 
but also I would like to explore at least some of the rest of the tower if I can. I have been told that I should probably avoid the garden in the middle. Okay, Linda's laboratory. Let's see what you've been hiding from us. The room to the south must have been Linda's laboratory. The floor in the middle glows red hot, and runes appear and fade on the surface of the semi-molten rock. This must be where she first summoned the creatures that destroyed the tower. Ah, Crystal One just dispels undead, not demons. Also, when did I pick up an Orb of Sight? totally should have done more damage to you. Can I search the chests while I'm in combat mode? Possibly not. Leather gloves. Uh-oh. Greyhoth speaks. The voice roars out. I am closer with every moment. Take this, worms. A hot wind rises up, scouring the room and halls of the Tower of Magi. It does a good job of boiling you in your armor before it dies away. Oh, is that the best you got? I could do nearly as much damage to myself stepping in this here lava. More damage, in fact. Fortunately, revive all. Hello? Oh, hey, remember that garden full of demons? I think I might maybe want to be not here.
<laughs> okay, Ruby Skeleton might have been been a mistake. I thought maybe he could get in melee range and claw some fools. Can I mind duel among demon? No. Can I mind duel an imp? Better. would actually be a real good time for all those invulnerability potions I've been stacking. I don't know how the iron skin brew stacks up to a strong invulnerability. Why can't I hit you? Major summon. So the demon infested area extends all the way over here. Can I kill literally any of you, please? And just because I haven't done so yet, Scry Monster, Mung Demon, huge pile of hit points, way too much armor, and skill, magic draining ray, resistant or immune to basically everything, 
probably can poison me when hitting. Not good. Not good at all. Well, that looks important. Yeah, Conrock's spirit was not kidding when he said this area was well guarded indeed. Okay, these guys have at least 200 base hit points. I'm barely scratching them even when blessed. And they are draining all of my spell points very quickly. I think I need to not engage with that area if I can at all avoid it. 